The Pittsburgh Steelers are here at St. Vincent College. They are in the dorms. There is nobody on the pup list. Mike Tomlin spoke. All the players have arrived and are settled, ready to go for tomorrow. Training camp 2023 is upon us. What's going on, everybody? I'm Noah Strackbine. Thank you for jumping on to Steelers To Go, your daily to-go cup of Pittsburgh Steelers news and analysis live from the parking lot of St. Vincent College in Latrobe, Pennsylvania, coming to you every single day. Find us on youtube.com slash Talk or subscribe anywhere you get your podcast today. We're going into exactly what we've been talking about all offseason, and that is that the Pittsburgh Steelers have a special feel about them. They have a second-year quarterback in Kenny Pickett who's seemingly a proven winner at this point. There is a lot of growth left in front of him, and I'm not going to say that this guy is elite or headed to somewhere special. What I'll say about Kenny Pickett is he did exactly what the Pittsburgh Steelers wanted him to do a year ago, and that is learn how to win in in clutch situations. When it is crunch time, those two-minute drills, the red zone offense, third downs, do not turn the ball over, do not make dumb plays, win football games in big moments. And what did he do all season? When those big moments arised, most times he came away victorious. Now it's about creating a fully well-rounded quarterback, somewhere that could enter the elite status, because that's how you get there. Nobody goes, oh, I could win in big moments, but I can't do anything else, and now I'm elite. You have to be able to win in big moments, you have to become a complete quarterback, and then boom, you now take everything and you continue to rise it up until you become the Jalen Hurts, the Joe Burrows, the Justin Herberts, the Patrick Mahomes, of the NFL and Kenny Pickett in year two has an opportunity to do that or at least begin that journey and you got that today talking to Kenny Pickett you realized very quickly and talking to the players and Mike Tomlin that he has full control of this team the offense is going to be built around him this season him and Matt Canada along with Mike Sullivan and everybody else kind of formulated a game plan that is accustomed to what his strengths are and what he's capable of doing best which I think is going to be to do wonders, work wonders for the Pittsburgh Steelers moving forward. Then you got guys like Najee Harris, who is, well, the guy's pissed off and every running back in the league is pissed off and they have the right to be pissed off. They're not getting paid. The market is devalued. There is nothing left for them and no hope seemingly heading into what can only become a worse and worse market for running backs. Najee was fired up talking about it, talking about how everybody wants them to go win games and shut out big performances and win in the red zone and be their third down guy. And running backs are told to do everything. But when it's come to being paid, they don't want to be paid. Nobody wants to pay them. Najee's in for a big year. And if he stays healthy, a thousand yard season is the expectation, but 12 to 1500 yards should be that baseline. And I don't know where Najee goes. I don't know if it's an up year or a down year because quite frankly, I thought last year was disappointing with Najee. And I don't know if it was the injuries. I'm going to use that as an excuse and say that you deal with not one, but two foot injuries in a season as a running back. It gets rather difficult to run the football behind a mediocre offensive line. Now he has a better offensive line, probably a fully loaded running offensive line once Broderick Jones steps into play, a better quarterback situation, better wide receivers, a big tight end in Darnell Washington. It just seems like big things are coming for Najee Harris. You talk to the defense and, well, everybody and their mother thinks that the Pittsburgh Steelers defense is going to be one of the best, and it's hard to argue against it. Alex Highsmith shows up, and not only is he fired up about his new contract and believes that this is – a big year for the Steelers defense, but his only goal right now is to go win a Super Bowl and he doesn't care about anything else whatsoever. I want to go win a Super Bowl. TJ Watt talked about how he's kind of becoming impatient and wants to go win a Super Bowl. And this is it. He needs some postseason success. It's been a long time since anybody in Pittsburgh's won a playoff game. They're getting tired. The pressure is as high as it's ever been. I think that's the biggest thing here is you look at the Pittsburgh Steelers and you say this team does have a special feel. This team does have something about them that you want to believe in, that you want to put your faith in and see how far it could go. But at the same time, you look at history and you look at everything around them and you say it's been special before and we've been let down. Maybe that changes this season. And then there's the big one. And the big one is easy. And his name is Mike Tomlin. And Mike Tomlin brings greatness with him everywhere, but he had the greatest Tomlinism I think I've ever heard when he said, I'm on 10, 
always. And that was the answer to whether or not he has more pressure because he acknowledged that his time as a head coach in the NFL is limited, that he has seen more days than he has left. And well, you're a Super Bowl winning head coach, but you've been to two and the last time you were there, you lost. That doesn't feel good for anybody. You could talk to, I mean, I listen to Travis Kelsey and Jason Kelsey all the time on their New Heights podcast, and they talk quite frequently about how bad it stings to lose a Super Bowl and how you do not forget that. Well, it's been 10 years, and I'm sure that Mike Tomlin still has not forgotten that. I just look at Mike Tomlin as a winner. I always have. I've always looked at Mike Tomlin as somebody different. You talk to him, you hear what the guys have to say about him, you hear what this team believes in when he's in the room, no matter how bad a situation is. And last year was as bad as it got. I mean, we talked about everything being wrong with this team. The locker room never gave up. Why? Because of Mike Tomlin. He has to turn that into something better. But I think the fact that he acknowledged that his days are numbered, and I don't think Mike Tomlin's going anywhere anytime soon, but I think he realizes, like, if I'm going to be one of the greatest, if I'm going to be the greatest, I have to start winning right now. And that opportunity is still very much so here. Mike Tomlin goes on a three Super Bowl win or, you know, knocks out another two of them. Those are numbers that most coaches don't come across in their career. Mike Tomlin's still got a very, very, very big opportunity. But all around, that was really the the forecast of day one, the outcome of day one, the vibe and the feel of day one is this team fully believes that they have something special. This is not a team with holes. Last year it was okay, like we know what we have. We know where our struggles are. We understand that it's a new quarterback situation. We understand that the offensive line is a little weak. We understand that there are holes on defense and that there are concerns here and we're young. This year, it's everything on paper looks very good. Everything on paper looks like the Pittsburgh Steelers should be a team that is very dangerous. And they're quite frankly tired of losing in the postseason. They're quite frankly tired of not making the postseason. They are tired of not being a great football team. That's a good vibe to come into training camp with. It's a very good competitive edge to have on 31 other teams who are coming in maybe a little red hot. Maybe a little, we have Aaron Rodgers, so we're invincible. Maybe a little, we have Patrick Mahomes or Jalen Hurts, so we're invincible. The Pittsburgh Steelers fully understand that they're going to be overlooked this season. They fully understand that they have to prove everything because they've earned nothing at this point. And to be quite honest with you, it sure sounds like they got it in them to go out and earn everything that they believe they should be given. Everything that they want to go out and get and succeed in. That's a great place to feel and to be. And coming in here, the feel of the Pittsburgh Steelers was special. And I've said it all summer, and I'm going to say it again. Live from Latrobe, we're off. And the Pittsburgh Steelers, they feel damn special.